Hey guys, so we're back, it's day four, so just two days out from the competition now, but sadly I found out this morning that the competition is actually gonna be canceled, which is an absolute bummer. However, I still wanna go over what I was talking to you about yesterday in terms of strategy for the competition day. And for me, whenever this is the scenario where competitions change, get canceled, etc., or you may potentially not be able to attend the competition for whatever the reason may be, if you've done all the training leading up to that competition prep, it's still really important for your bigger training picture to still build up and have an attempt at some 1RMs, which is exactly what I'm going to be doing uh, on Saturday anyway. Now, when it comes to that two days out from the competition, what I decided to do in my evening session was heavy clean and jerks. Now, when I say heavy, I ran up to what is my what was going to be my opening weight for Saturday, which was 170 kilos. Now for me in the build up process to that, I took a little bit bigger jumps than I normally would do in my warm up routine, just so that I'm not fatiguing myself too much in the build up. So what I did is I built to 170, working backwards from that, I did 160, 150, um, 130, 110, 90, 70. So very few repetitions in the build up for that day's training. What I also did whenever I'm building up in singles to my top weights is I'll tend to do more repetitions at 70 or 90 kilos to make sure I'm warm first before then building up to those heavier lifts. So that was kind of how my session panned out. I hit the 170 nice and easy. And although it felt easy, I didn't want to attempt any more. It's just like I said to you in the previous video, I don't want to fatigue myself or potentially go to a point where I'm going to miss a lift or change plans this late out in the day. Okay. So that's kind of where that last training session was on the Thursday. Now with regards to prepping for the competition day, one thing that I love to do two days out from a competition is to get a hold of the start list and have a plan out really in my head in terms of what the day is going to look like. So commonly when it's competition day, the first thing that you'll have to do on that given day is your weigh-in. Now, depending on the day, uh, the time of the day in which you're competing can have a huge impact into what you're actually going to be eating on that given day. That's why it's always so important to check your body weight in the morning and sometimes even traveling with a set of scales if you know that you're going to be close on weight so that you can see then throughout the day if you do decide to eat before weighing that you're still going to be under you will naturally lose weight throughout the day even if you weigh in in the morning say 96 kilos and then you need to weigh 96 later in the day for the competition you're naturally going to lose weight through going to the toilet etc as the day progresses so it doesn't mean that you don't you can't eat on that day leading up to competition you just need to be mindful of what you're putting in your body too many heavy foods or a lot of liquid is going to push your weight up a lot Whereas you could get away with some smaller portion meals, only little sips of fluid so you stay hydrated or hydrolyte, etc. So that you're still feeling good by the end of the day. I would say if you are close on weight and you can't consume too much food on that competition day, that you reduce the amount of movement that you're doing, okay? That's going to stop you from expending any excess energy, especially when you're not going to be fueling yourself on that day with food. Now, once I know when in the day my competition is going to be, I know where my food needs to be for the lead up and I've got my plan in terms of who's going to be competing. When I talk about my strategy for the day, it's making sure that I'm arriving to the venue with enough time to weigh in, but then also having an idea of who's going to be lifting and where potentially in the order I'm going to be for that day. For example, if you look at the start list for a competition day and you've got the heaviest opening weights, then the likelihood is you're going to be the last one to warm up. So therefore, you don't need to start building up in your warm up until so many lifts have gone. Now, the easiest way to do this is if you look at a start list for a competition, you'll be able to see, say, there's 10 competitors and say everyone's got to have um, three lifts before your first lift's going to be. That's two minutes per lift. That's going to be roughly 30 lifts before you're actually going to be doing your first one in competition. If you allow two minutes for that, it could be potentially an hour before you're actually going to be hitting your first weight from when the competition starts. Now that's a huge group, but that gives you an idea roughly, if you know that your warm up takes 20 minutes to warm up, you don't need to start your warm up routine until potentially halfway through the competition. This is something that you should have already timed throughout the week to get an idea of how long it takes you to get from empty bar 
to your starting weight, which is something that I did in my previous sessions building up. Mine's generally 20 minutes though. So that gives you an idea in terms of knowing what you should be doing in the warm up room so that you don't warm up too early. This is something that like I said on that day out from the competition that you need to prepare for. Likewise, same applies for the clean and jerk, okay? Knowing that if your warm up takes 15 minutes or slightly longer, leave yourself enough time between after you finish your snap session between the clean and jerk so that you don't warm up too quickly and then go cold before you get your first lift. Now, like I said in previous videos, when it comes to the actual lift that you'll start on the day, I always think of your first lift as your safe opener. That's the lift that you could hit nine times out of 10 any given day in your training, that 90, 95% lift so that you get one on the board. It's so important that you get that first lift on the board so that you're in the competition. And then regardless if you only make one lift in each, you've got a score that's gonna lead you winning. Now that would be even more important if for example, you're the strongest person in the group. You don't wanna put yourself under unnecessary pressure to secure the gold medal as ultimately that should be the most important thing. So sometimes actually reducing your starting weight to something that's nice and easy to secure the medal first is really important. Only then do you build up then to try and go for a new PB or a max lift after that. So that's, I guess, kind of it in terms of a couple of key things that I've kind of been thinking about on your on my day strategy. We're now one day out from my max out training session. So like I said, for the day before competition, I'm going to be traveling. So I'm not going to be doing any training on this given day. And then in tomorrow's video, what I'm gonna do, because like I said, I'm not gonna be running up um, in the competition because it's canceled. Instead, I'm gonna give you an insight into my heavy training session. I went up, built up and hit my daily maxes as I had planned for the competition and give you an insight into kind of things that I was focusing on on that training session. So I'll kind of give you a run through of the session and kind of speak over it in the next video. So I hope you guys picked up a couple of tips and tricks that's gonna help you on your competition day in this video. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And if you haven't seen any of the other videos, skip back a bit and have a look at the first few from this episode series. Take care guys, and I'll see you soon.